my name is Hassan and I would like to present an in-depth review of the latest software update of Motorola E2 second generation which has now been updated to Android 6.0 Marshmallow. This cell phone comes in a 4G and a 3G model. The one I have with me is the 4G LTE model. I was notified about this update day before yesterday. So it is a brand new launch at least here in Europe. Uh, if you look at it, the first thing that you would notice is the font has changed. The font for time, if you are familiar with the previous version, has clearly been changed. And I think it's a bit more streamlined and I like the new font. Similarly, the icons have been changed. As you can see, the message icon is not as it used to be. And as well, the icons are now a bit more flat and a bit more streamlined. I guess they are going with the new streamlined minimalistic look. Overall, for me, there has been a great improvement in performance. The user experience is much more smooth and fluent now. I've had the cell phone for over six months and it is a budget cell phone and costs like $150. So lately, my experience hasn't been that good. The applications would open a bit slow. The, there would be slag and stutter. But now the applications open pretty fast. You can easily switch between them. Multitasking is faster as well. So yeah, with this upgrade, there is definitely an overall improvement in the performance of the system. A new feature introduced in this update is related to how you interact with icons. To drop an icon on the home screen, you would have to long press it and drop it at the desired location. Now you have two more options to view its information or uninstall it. To uninstall it, you just have to drop it onto the top right corner where it says uninstall and it would ask you if you want to uninstall the application or not. Of course, clicking OK with uninstall it. You can do the same from the desktop as well. Just long click the application and drop it into the uninstall, uninstall part. I think this is a great improvement. Uh, iOS always had this uh, option the way you long click and uninstall an application. Previously on Android, you had to do it the long way. Go to settings, go to application, select the application and uninstall it. Now it's much quicker and I really welcome this change. Of course, you can check out the information, which again, you would have to go through settings to see previously, but now can be easily accessed quickly. The notification panel is quite similar. To access it, you drop it down from the top and it lets you see all your latest notifications. You can extend them or cancel them. What has changed more drastically is the quick setting panel. Previously, with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you only had the option to either turn it on or turn it off by clicking on it. But now, in addition to that, you have this drop-down menu. Clicking on this drop-down arrow brings up all the Wi-Fi that are available nearby and you can turn your Wi-Fi on and off. Of course, you can go to the settings by simply clicking more settings. Similarly, this applies to the Bluetooth as well. We can click on the drop-down to see all the nearby available Bluetooth connections. Another feature that Motorola users would be able to recognize is the Do Not Disturb. What it lets you do is turn off notification for a given amount of time. You furthermore have options to have to completely silent the notifications, to only let the alarm ring, or get notifications from context you have only starred. That is the priority only option. This option was available before in Motorola, uh, in Motorola devices, but now it has been included in stock Android itself. One of the area that has greatly been revamped is the settings menu. You can go about phone and check it out, Android 6.0. Of course, tapping it multiple times brings up the little Easter egg. You can play around with it. Uh, okay, just let me try here. Uh, what's wrong? Long click. Yeah, sorry. So it opens up the Flappy Bird kind of game. Uh, it was available in the previous version as well. But now you have more of a marshmallow related, uh, related theme here. So yeah, if you are into this game, you always have the option to play it. A new addition to the setting option is the memory menu. This lets you look at your RAM, see how your performance is, how much memory is being used, the average percentage of memory used, and how much memory do you have free. Moreover, you can click on this option to see each application and how much RAM it has been using. 
this can really help you to find out which application is eating more RAM. So if you want, you can uninstall it to improve your performance. You can go in details and select see details for each given application. In my opinion, the best feature that has been added in this version of Android is the fact you can use your micro SD card as part of your internal storage. As I've said before, I've had the cell phone for over six months and one of the biggest problems I have faced is it keeps running out of internal storage. If you have less than 500 MB of internal storage left, the cell phone no longer syncs your data. So for me to even get my email synced on a daily basis, I had to go and clean the cache or clear some data from other applications just to free up some space. As you can see, I don't really have too many applications installed. I have some work-related applications and the social media apps that everyone has on the cell phone. I don't even have a single game installed. Everything else is pre-installed. Um, it's pretty much bloatware, but it is there. So, even though I don't have too many applications installed, previously I used to continuously run into insufficient storage problems. And now with this new feature, I can easily use my micro SD card as part of my internal storage. This task can be accomplished when you insert a new SD card. It gives you an option. Do you want to use it as portable storage or make it part of your internal storage? And then you can easily transfer your data into your internal storage. I was able to transfer over 1.5 GB worth of data into my micro SD card and now I have over 2 GBs of internal storage free. So that pretty much solves my problem and I know a lot of you are going to say hey you could have always achieved this by rooting your device and I know that I used to do it on my HTC Explorer which ran Android 2.3 so the feature has been available for a long time now but the thing is I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people out there that don't either that either don't know how to root the device or don't just want to root this device and introducing this feature in stock Android would greatly help them and I am sure there are a lot of people that face the uh, insufficient internal storage error while installing application and this just makes their life easier. With every new feature we might face some problems and the problem that came with this feature is that while transferring my data from internal storage to micro SD card it showed me a warning that my micro SD card was not fast enough and I might experience some applications slowing down or lagging. So far, I have not seen this problem and all the applications have been working uh, on the normal speed. What I did notice was while installing applications, the installation took much longer than before. I had to reinstall Facebook and it took 3-4 to four minutes to install. I guess the reason behind this is writing to micro SD card is pretty much slower uh, than writing to your internal storage. So that is why the installation, installation might be slow. Uh, but then again, this might be just due to the fact that I have a cheap slow micro SD card. If you have a good fast one, you might even not get the warning and might not even see any difference between installing to your micro SD card or internal storage. Another new feature introduced in this version of Android is the Google Now tab. To activate it, long press the home button. What it basically does is it reads all the text available on the screen and then make suggestion based on it and displays cards and other useful links based on it. Uh, to demonstrate it, we would like to open this uh, document that we wrote about the Thera 25 uh, incident. Anyone from the field of IT would be well aware of this. Uh, so we simply long press the home button to activate uh, Google Now tab. Doing this, it reads the text on the screen and see it displays information related to what's on the screen. We had mentioned Nancy in this uh, document who is a computer scientist and of course the whole document was about Thera 25 accident and see it displays cards related to both these options. And you can further click these cards to get more detail on it. With Thera 25 you can simply search it on Google and you'll get Google results. You can click just the button and it would take you uh, to the Google search results for this incident. On event uh, for Nancy, the option is of website. You can click on it and it opens her home page from her University of MIT. So it is a very useful feature and pretty much helps you 
accomplish a lot of tasks in a lot faster way by suggesting cards related to what's displayed on the screen. This was a quick in-depth review of all the new features that are available now after the software update of Motorola E2 second generation which introduces Android 6.0 Marshmallow. I tried to introduce all the new big features in this video. I had to skip some of them to keep this video of a reasonable length. For example, now to share your screen, you can use do it using Google Now tab and there has been improvement in the share option itself. Uh, previously, it just showed a list of application with which you can share it, but now it shows your top contacts depending on the application that you used. So now you can just share your screen with your top WhatsApp contact. Uh, moreover, highlighting text has changed a bit as well. You still have to uh, long click a text to highlight it, but now you have a little pop up windows that lets you copy it, cut it or select all. Moreover, you also have options such as assist, which uh, does a quick Google Now tab search of the selected text. Or if you have translate installed, you can directly translate it. It opens a nice little pop up on your screen and you can just translate the text on the fly instead of switching to the application itself. Overall, uh, for me, this is a great update. As I've said before, the fact that now I can use my micro SD card as internal storage is a huge thing for me. It has really made my life easier and I don't have to worry about running short of my internal storage. And overall, I think my cell phone is much more fluid, much more smooth than it used to be. Uh, switching between application, multitasking and just day to day tasks just seem a lot more smoother. And you uh, do not realize how good it feels till you actually get it. Like I was used to of a slow sluggish uh, experience, but now since it's so much more smoother, it just feels so much better. And I think that overall Android 6.0 is a great update and I think Motorola have done a good job of releasing it com comparatively quicker than other applications. Remember this is a budget phone and not the flagship phone so it is pretty low on priority of pushing the update onto and making uh, so even though I have received it this quick I am pretty glad about it and the fact that they don't they didn't really add much on top of it. The fact that Motorola really likes to keep the stock Android feel to it and just install some of the application and add a few features really is something that I appreciate. I really enjoy the stock Android feel over any other custom feel as done by Sony or Samsung. So if you like the video, please leave a thumbs up, comment, share and subscribe to the channel. It would greatly help me and motivate me to make new videos. I have had this channel for a while now but I have never been active on it and I am planning to start making videos regularly. Uh, if you have questions related to the cell phone or technology in general, you can leave them in the comment section below. I would either answer them there or maybe even make a new video for them. And even if you have any question related to programming, I am a computer science student doing my masters and I have plenty of experience developing different kind of applications. So leave them down there and I might be able to help you out. Uh, thank you again for watching. Uh, I will try to make my videos better every time. I don't really have the equipment to make pro level videos but with time I hope I can really improve and make videos that you would like and appreciate more. So thank you again guys. Uh, stay tuned and you'll see more videos soon.